Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on optimization. We went through what optimization is, and then later we went through the analytical solutions of optimization for 1D problems and also for 2D problems. So we learned how to get a minimum maximums and also how to define uh, saddles. Now, the idea here is what if uh, analytical solutions were difficult to deal with or were not available? What do we do from this point forward? And that's the purpose of this entire um, class, which is we apply numerical methods. Now we're going to start with, start with 1D optimization problems, which is basically the uh, function that you have in front of us here. And there are two techniques that are commonly used when you're dealing with optimization problems or 1D optimization problems, which, uh, which are neutron rafson and golden section search method. Now, in this lesson, we're going to deal with Newton Raphson, and uh, the reason is because it's the most familiar to you right now. Now, Newton Raphson, we learned that it's a root finding technique. And the idea here is how do we turn an optimization problem into a root finding technique problem? And given we already written a Newton Raphson code before, uh, how what are the slight changes that turns a Newton Raphson uh, technique that uh, finds a root of a function to a neutron Raphson technique that finds an optimum for a function. Now this is the function that we dealt with before and we found an optimum at negative 3.33 and we also found an optimum at x equals 0. So like we said there is something that is characteristic of these two points is that the derivative is equal to 0. So what if I actually take the derivative of this function and I graph it and the derivative was negative 2x minus 0.6x squared. Now, if I graph this function, you're going to find that the two roots of this function, which is negative 3.33 and 0, are the optimum of the original function. So if I find the root, the roots of the derivative of a function, I find the optimums of a function. So that's the entire idea of this technique. If I find the roots of a derivative of a function, I, in consequence, get the optimums of that function. So let's go ahead and see what does that change in terms of the equation that we dealt with before. We dealt with this xr is equal to xi f of xi divided by f prime of xi. So we needed the guess. And also we needed the function that I was trying to get the root for and the derivative of that function. So you can see naturally how this will uh, translate over. The function I want to get its root is f prime of x xi and also the uh, derivative of f prime f f double prime right so this went from f xi to f prime of xi and this went from f prime of xi to f double prime of xi so now this is the equation to find the optimum of the function it's a very very simple technique it's merely that if i get so the idea is if i get the roots of the derivative function, I get the optimums of the original function. Now let's actually go ahead to the code and see how the code is going to change. Well, in this case, if we're getting a root of a function, we dealt with a function and its derivative. But in this case, we're going to deal with the derivative and the second derivative. So I'm going to define these two functions up here. So the derivative we defined as negative 2x minus 0.6x squared. And the second derivative here is negative uh, 2 minus 1.2 x. Now still we're defining uh, the do while with uh, er and I'm using er this in this uh, lesson to kind of um, uh, tell you that it's also called the relative error. The um, error that we used up to this point, the approximate error is also the relative approximate error because we're dividing by the approximation here. So this is relative. It's still defined initially as 100. This is the guess, uh, the first guess, and this um, x um, or i equal 1 is to up the i by 1 because we're keeping track of the iteration numbers here. Uh, so this is still the same, how we define the error. Uh, this is putting the uh, approx uh, storing the approximation before we get a newer approximation. Uh, this is a code that um, displays the data here so we can see what's happening with each iteration. 
And uh, one extra change that I did is, okay, we found the axes where the derivative is equal to zero. Now we actually need to define uh, whether they're mins or maxes. And we do this using the second derivative test. So I'm going to have an if statement here that says if the second derivative is greater than zero, then uh, we have a minimum. And I wanted to display that minimum in this cell 38.4. Else, if it's not a minimum, it has to be a maximum. So uh, it still it displays max um, in the cell. And you can see I'm putting it uh, between quotations. And if we're dealing with a phrase, a word, or a letter, you have to put it between quotations. There's another change that I actually want to do. And uh, in this lesson, we have an optimum at zero. And that actually causes a problem, especially causes a problem when we're trying to calculate the error. Because if the optimum is equal to zero and I'm getting an iteration, the x optimum is going to get closer and closer to zero, which means I'm going to get closer and closer to dividing by zero. And when you divide by zero, this number is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is going to tend to diverge instead of trying to go below 0.01%. So how do we remedy that? Well, an easy way to remedy that, instead of dealing with relative error, we can deal with absolute error. So the absolute error just is the distance between the x optimum and the xi, the difference between our current our approximation and our previous approximation, without actually dividing it by x optimum. And another thing that we're going to do, since we have uh, uh, EA, I'm going to have to define the error here or initialize it at 100. But also, I'm going to have to add this EA inside of the do loop here. So I'm going to say not only is the relative error has to be greater than 0 0.01, and the EA has to be greater than 0 0.01. And the reason that is, because I know as I'm approximating this optimum here, this ER is going to diverge. So I know this ER is going to be greater than 0 0.01. But the EA is not. So if ER is greater than 0 0.01 and EA is less than, it's going to break out of the do while loop. And this is what I want to do. So that's why I can't use an OR. Because if I use an OR, I'm going to be locked in the loop because ER is always going to be greater than 0.01%. So you have to use an AND here. And that is only a problem when we're dealing with an optimum at zero. Uh, I don't need this uh, absolute error if I'm dealing with this optimum here. So let's actually go ahead and see how our code is going to work. Uh, let me actually delete this. And um, so I will use a guess. So we, we have this uh, function here. So my educated guess I'm going to say is about negative 3 is for my first guess. And what do we expect? We expect negative 3 uh, to get negative 3.33 so at the minimum. So I expect if this code, if this FL statement works properly, I should display a minimum down here. So if I run the code, all right, perfect. So one thing that I forgot to do is I forgot to uh, define uh, um, the absolute error. So I'm going to say 21, uh, 28 uh, plus i, and I'm going to say this is in column 4, and I'm going to say equal to the absolute error. And I'm going to run it again, and here. Here we go. So we have the relative error when below um, actually, the absolute error is the one that went below 0.01%. This is still slightly above 0.01%. But we got a great approximation for the optimum at negative 3.333, which is basically where our optimum is. And it took three iterations to do that. Um, and you can see we still have the quadratic nature of the um, of the neutron Raphson. And it classified it based um, on the second derivative test as a minimum. So let's actually go ahead and uh, try to get the root here at um, x equals 0. And a, great, a good guess to have is negative 1 because we talked about the guesses of the neutron Raphson. You get a guess that is in close proximity to the root that you're interested in. So I'm going to get a guess of like negative 1. So let's actually go ahead and see what we're going to get. So let me actually delete this and also delete that. Uh, so let's actually run this. All right, perfect. So it classified it as a max. And here, you see, the XR is diverging massively. So we went from 233 to 544 to two, uh, almost 3,000 to 87,000. Uh, so you see it's gonna, it was going to continue to diverge. But because the approximate error... 
uh, went below 0.01%, right? Uh, we um, have now our optimum. An optimum, this is 4.32 times 10 to negative 6. So very, very close to zero. So this rounds down uh, comfortably to zero. So it found um, what our optimum is and it classified it as a max. So you can see this is a very, very simple uh, lesson. We're taking leverage of something that we al already learned before, which is the neutral refson uh, to finding roots, uh, root of an equation. And in this case, we applied it to finding an optimum. And the idea was, if I can find the roots of the derivative function, um, if I find the roots of a derivative function, uh, that is in consequence the optimums of the original function. Okay, and uh, the changes in terms of the code is now we're defining the derivative and the second derivative in terms of the functions here, and we're redefining the x optimum here. Also, we included the second derivative test, and we added the absolute error here. Um, in this case, to remedy if we we have an optimum close to zero, but if you're not dealing with a function that has optimums close to zero, that is not a condition that you need to um, include. Well, this is for uh, Newton Raphson. In the next lesson, we're going to deal with the golden section search method, which is actually um, uh, based on a pretty famous ratio, the golden ratio, uh, that you're probably uh, aware of. But um, this marks the end of this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.